Thank you. <laughs> the nine years my husband, Sieb, and I have run Prima Bistro have come with a full menu of unexpected lessons and surprises. 95% uh, of the time, I'd say I'm very happy with our decision to move here and open a restaurant, but the other 5% has been full of some real questioning and angst. I knew that I wanted to be a teacher by the time I was five, and all of my decisions in my early life kept me firmly on that path. I, um, after earning my master's in teaching at Seattle University, I taught in the Seattle Public Schools for nine years. So for me, the first surprise in restaurant ownership is that I owned a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> on January 13th, 2006, Steve and I were more or less coerced into driving up to Whidbey to check out the then empty Star Bistro space. We loved visiting Whidbey uh, and had actually been married up here, but we had absolutely no intention of uprooting our lives in the city. We had a two-year-old, uh, I had a great teaching position, and uh, Steve was a chef at an up-and-coming restaurant in Seattle. Uh, so there was absolutely no way. Jean Felton led us through this dusty, dank, deserted space with a lantern. And then he took us downstairs to meet Tamar. And we quite literally fell in love with the space and the Feltons. And before we made it to the ferry back home, we said, what the hell? Let's, <laughs> let's, let's go for it. I somehow wrote a business plan. And Whidbey Island Bank decided to give us some money. And we had taken possession by April 1st. Um, Steve moved into the restaurant to begin renovations while I stayed in the city uh, with our two-year-old finishing the school year and uh, renovating our home to put on the market. Um, on June 28th of that same year, just five months after we were absolutely not going to be doing this, we opened our doors. And then one week later, we were hit by the crowds of Chuchokum. And <laughs> so, so this is truly a thank you to each and every one of you out there that decided to give us another shot after whatever disaster <laughs> happened at your table. <laughs> Running a public business in a small town has its challenges. Uh, the rumor mill in Langley is a thing of wonder. And um, I can say that I definitely have had to grow a much thicker skin than I ever thought I, that it, I, I, ever thought I would have to as an elementary school teacher. Steve and I have been together for 22 years. And operating a restaurant is not easy on a marriage. The <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite quotes about restaurant life is by a Seattle restaurant owner. And she says, uh, people think that opening a restaurant would be like throwing a dinner party every night for your friends and that that would be fun. But in actuality, it's more like running or throwing Thanksgiving dinner every night while doing your taxes. <laughs> and and it this, it <laughs> And that, that could not be more true. Prima is our life. Uh, we stress constantly. We both don't sleep very well. We, we argue a lot, of, and we agonize over difficult business decisions, especially the ones that have to do with employees. We um, don't see enough of our kids in the summers. We drink too much wine, and we eat too much butter. Uh, <laughs> and we... And we battle over small things, but typically, as long as I let him think it was his idea, then I'll get my way. <laughs> um, but for some crazy reason, we really love what we're doing. Restaurants get into your blood. Uh, it's the energy, the constant, ever-changing, crazy situations, uh, making people happy, creating a community between ourselves and our customers and our employees. Uh, it's a great place to be raising our girls. They are surrounded by so many people who care about them. And uh, they're proud that they're the owners of Prima, and I'm very proud that, of what we've created. Surprisingly, looking back over the nine years, uh, the best piece of advice I've received did not come from a business mentor, but it came from Sieb that first summer that we opened. And he said to me, uh, no matter what, when someone asks you how things are going, come up with something good to say, something positive, because people want to be part of something successful. And I've really taken that to heart. And no matter how difficult the day or what kind of situation I may have had with an employee or a customer, I always smile and I try to come up with something good to say because there always is something good to say. And uh, I really believe that's had a positive impact on our business. Um, 
I definitely did not know how passionately I'd care about our employees. Can't look at that. Uh, uh, that really hit home during the crushingly busy summer season of 2011 when we lost our dear friend and pastry chef, Natanya Johnson, to her battle with diabetes. Uh, working at Prima gave her a purpose, but it also made her more sick. She was a tireless perfectionist, and I know many of you benefited from that. She, uh, she would work at something until it was exactly how she wanted it, even if she should have been home in bed. Uh, and I will grapple with that for the rest of my life. Um, a group of us have created a scholarship in her name to send Southwood B girls to culinary school. And uh, we are currently supporting Jessica Van Wetter in her, in her pursuit to become the very best pastry chef in the world. We've raised over $20,000, and we hope to have a second recipient this spring. Yeah. I definitely, when I was teaching first grade, did not think I'd be someone with multiple tattoos or that I'd be working with a group of people who 100% of the time have tattoos. <laughs> um, restaurants attract a harder living, more alternative personality. Uh, and often issues that we're dealing with at Prima are indicators of larger issues in our, in our community. I had no idea how much mental illness and addiction we'd be dealing with. I've spent countless hours in the office with broken people, sorting through personal problems. We've had employees drop their kids off in the middle of the night. We've had employees live with us and given out any personal loans. I certainly was surprised to find myself driving one of our young female employees up to Citizens Against Domestic Abuse in Oak Harbor for a few months, trying to ultimately get her out of an abusive situation. Uh, we've dragged a few kids kicking and screaming through their senior years of high school. Do not drop out now. You've got one more month. <laughs> <laughs> I've also been very honored to be a part of many really happy and joyous occasions in the lives of our employees and the friends that we've made since moving here. I've watched many relationships begin and blossom at Prima and then turn into beautiful marriages and families. I also didn't know that there'd still be this element of teaching to my job now. There's, um, uh, restaurant workers are often very young, and we take pride in uh, spotting their talent and then mentoring them training them, and then encouraging them to soar off to their new challenges. When we opened, we hired this punk 18-year-old kid, and he quickly moved up into, in, through the ranks at Prima and became our sous chef. And then he moved to Seattle and moved his way up through the Seattle food scene, and he's now a chef in Paris. <laughs> Surprisingly, many people, most people, don't think that restaurant work is a real job, but it is a career for many people. Uh, we've been able to offer medical benefits, and this year, even retirement plans for our crew. And thanks. That's, that is something I'm very, very proud of. Uh, one of our bartenders, a restaurant lifer, said to me, maybe, maybe this means I don't have to regret the decisions I've made throughout my life. Maybe this really is my real job, and I don't have to figure out what I'm going to be when I grow up. <laughs> Uh, being able to contribute so much to the business is something I could only have imagined. Uh, teaming up with fellow restaurant owners to put on uh, fundraising, events, fundraising events has been a favorite uh, experience of mine in, in these nine years. I've been so inspired by the tireless efforts of fellow business owners in Langley. It's pretty amazing what they do, both in their own businesses and then also in the supporting community causes. None more so than our uh, now I'll start crying. None more so than our landlords, the Feltons. Without their um, without their friendship and support and mentorship, we would not be where we are. We would not still be here. Um, owning a restaurant was not my dream when I was five or when I was twenty-five, but it has given me a true sense of joy and a great, strong community to live in. And I would not trade this life for any other. Thank you.